اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ علی سیدنا محمد و علی الطاہرین ورس نمبر 2 اف سورہ النساء واعطوا اليتامى اموالهم ولا تتبدلوا الخبيث بالطيب ولا تاكلوا اموالهم الى اموالكم انه كان حبا كبيرا give the orphans their property and do not replace the good with the bad and do not eat up their property by mingling it with your own property for that is indeed a great sin before proceeding to discuss the <coughs> details of this verse If you remember last week when we were discussing the uh, concept of silatul rahim which was one of the main themes of the verse but taqullah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham fear god in whose name you endure one another and fear the wombs i mentioned that there is a beautiful hadith in this regards from Imam Raza alayhi salam. I uh, read that first and then we go inshallah to discuss the next verse. From Abu al-Hasan al-Raza alayhi salam who said, Inna Allah azza wa jal amara bi thalathatin maqroonun biha thalathatun ukhra. Allah azza wa jal has commanded and join three things joined with another three things all of them are from the quran of course these things which are coupled with each other one amara bis salat wa zakat the first two things which are coupled together in the quran are salat and zakat wa awsani bis salat wa zakat wa aqimu as salat wa atu zakat so these are two things which go hand in hand together in the Quran and then he says فَمَنْ صَلَّى وَلَمْ يُزَكِّرِ لَمْ تُقْبَلْ بِنُّ صَلَاتُ Whoever prays but does not give zakat his salat is not acceptable. So this is the first thing. The second two things which are together is enjoined gratefulness to prayer gratefulness to the parents and has coupled it with gratefulness to himself wa amara bi shukr wa lil bi shukr lah wa lil walidayn an ashkur li as we have in the verse an ashkur li wa lil walidayn so whoever thanks allah is grateful to allah and not to his parents he is counted about among the ungrateful to god and what is related to this verse wa amara bi taqa illah wa silat ar rahim as he said wa taqu allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham join together fear god in whose name you adjure each other, you ask each other things, and what taqul arham, the relatives, the next of kin. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسِلْ رَحِمَهُ لَمْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَهَ Thus, if one does not connect with his blood relatives, then he is not wary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very beautiful hadith taken from the Qur'an, three things which are mentioned in the Quran conjoined together. Okay, let's go to verse number two. Give the orphans their property and do not replace the good with the bad. Now, the subject here is, uh, the, the main subject in this verse is about the orphans, which continues in the following verses. Orphans that one adopts and raises in their home. Because, of course, Yatama were not just in the streets. They were either in uncle's house or aunt's house 
brother's house or something like that. So, وَآتُوا الْيَتَامَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ is an address to awliya or awsiya of the mayyad or awliya the guardians of the orphan or awsiya of the mayyad who, the, for example, the deceased had uh, made the wasiya that after me uh, such and such person should look, look after my uh, my young children and their property should be in their hands, for example. This is so an address to the Awliya and Osya. The verse commands the guardians, whoever in whose house this, these orphans are, that they should not infringe on the right of the orphans to the benefit of themselves. And uh, they should not withhold what legally belongs to the orphans from them. Give the orphans their property. Uh, and then the verse goes on elaborating this by two prohibitions. One is that the quality of their property should not be changed to another thing which is uh, less in quality. For example, they have a harvest of, uh, of wheat or barley or whatever. And uh, you, the, the guardian harvests them and sells them and replace it with something which is of less quality. Or they have very good herd of goats or, 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 or camel or things like that. The guardian would change them in quality. So, And also, do not add their property to yours, eating them together, and you don't know how much of their property you have taken, how much uh, le is left for them. Now, this is the, the main idea of the verse. And do not replace the good with the, with the bad, good quality with the bad quality. And, of course, do not eat up their property uh, unnecessarily, which I will explain later on. We're going to the details of the verse. First of all, وَآتُوا الْيَتَامَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ Certainly, the yatama should be given their amwal after they have come to, to age. So, آتُوا الْيَتَامَ doesn't mean that as long as they are orphans and they are raised in your houses, give them their property. No. After they come to the age and they are not orphans anymore, give them what belongs to them. And do not withhold it, or do not make business with it, or whatever. Just give it to them, because they now can decide what they can do with their property. So this is خَتَابٌ لِلْأَوْلِيَاءِ وَالْأَوْسِيَاءِ That uh, they should give the property to, to the orphans. Now, orphan is someone who has no father, because fathers were the guardians, certainly. And, of course... The ones who have not reached the age of puberty. The age of puberty is when the yotm or orphanage or being orphan is finished. The person is not orphan anymore. Although we may call them orphan, orphans like for example the prophet was called Yatim Abu Talib. Yatim Abu Talib. Uh, even after he, he, he had become mature and even after he was a prophet, well, of course, it means that he was raised in the house of Abu Talib. But uh, there is this hadith from the prophet, La yutma ba'd al -ihtalam. There is no uh, uh, idea of orphan after the person has come to the age of puberty. However, this verse is certainly qualified by another verse which comes later on, verse number 6 in this surah, that it's not enough that they come to the age of puberty. Because, for example, a girl may come to the age of puberty at the age of 10 or 11 or 9, and a boy may, may come to the age of 14, 15, 16, and they do not have yet the mental maturity to know what to do with their property. So verse number six says, What Hatta Eza Nekah. So test the orphans 
I mean, by testing means that uh, uh, assess whether they are mature mentally or they're not. Until when they reach the age of marriage. And the age of marriage is the age of puberty. This is what we learn from these verses. If you see maturity in them. So this maturity, uh, he said, if you see maturity in them, then give them their property. So this maturity is different from uh, maturity by by puberty or reaching the age of uh, uh, age when one can actually marry. Although I mean, legally people may not be able to marry at that age, but balakun uh, means at the age that uh, naturally. Naturally, I, I'm not talking legally. Naturally, they can marry and they can reproduce. This is the age. However, this is not the age that you should give them their property back. If you find maturity of mind, maturity of calculation in them, and this may be different in different people. I mean, one yati may come to that age at 20, one at 25, one at 16. It, it depends how they are raised, how independent they have been. So this is actually qualified by verse number six. If, and it doesn't mean that as long as they are yatim, give their, their, uh, their property. When the yatim or being orphan is finished, they come to the age of puberty. That is when the yot is finished. And then, of course, you have to assess if they have maturity or not, because then the other verses, they may be safi in that term. They, you may give them their money and they squander it, the world or just use it for different <coughs> petty things. And therefore, that, that caveat must be there. After they have come to the age, you, you should not be to hold their property. Give them what they belong to them. Uh, and do not change the good quality with bad quality. Now, in Majma al Bayan, he says that there are several meanings for this one is what I mentioned that there may be a good quality with barley is because amwal is not restricted to money it may be a, a state it may be a herd of sheep or camel it may be some harvest so means do not take the good quality. And then you say, okay, I have taken seven camels from this yatim. I give him seven camels from my own property. No, that is la tatabattalul khabitha bittayyib. Another meaning which uh, Sheikh Tabrasi actually prefers is this. What belongs to them is haram for you. And what belongs to you is halal for you. If you take the haram, it's khabith. And do not take mix haram with halal. La tatabattalul khabitha bin tayyib means do not take their property which is haram for you. La tastabdalu ma harramahu Allah ta'ala alaykum min amwal al-yatama bima ahlallahu lakum min amwalakum. What belongs to you is halal. When you take that, in fact, you have put aside halal and have taken the haram. This is tabdeelul khabitha al-tayyib. Another meaning which you mentioned is that by using their property, you say, okay, let them, they are in my house, let me take their, their money now. And uh, because I'm poor, because I don't have anything, this yatim is very rich, do not take something. And this is what we have in many narrations as well. 
that sometimes some risk is destined for us to reach us. But because we don't have patience, for example, a person goes and steals. And what he has stolen was the amount of the rest that Allah had destined for him, which was meant to come a bit later. But he has now taken that haram and the, what was destined is given to him through haram now, not through halal. So this is another meaning for la tatabattalul and one other thing that he mentions here is that uh, it is said that uh, at the time of Jahiliya, what they did, they did not regard any right for women and children on the age of course the orphans to inherit anything. So they used to completely take up for themselves, take for themselves whatever property was left for women and for children. And this is one, of course, uh, one of the things that the verse is uh, is referring to. However, of course, this is a, uh, uh, a very restricted meaning. Majma Ulmaya says the first meaning that their property for you is haram. Do not change what is halal for you with haram, which comes from their side. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالَكُمْ Now, in tafsir they say إِلَىٰ here means ma'ah, because literally إِلَىٰ means do not eat up their property to your property. While it should be do not eat up their property with your property. وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ مَا أَمْوَالِكُمْ <coughs> There are several uh, explanations for that. What, what Majma al-Bayan says is that لَا تُضِيفُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَمْوَالِكُمْ Do not add, and then إِلَىٰ makes, makes sense here. Do not add their property to their, your property. It's keep it completely distinct from each other so that you can give them back to them when they come to the age, when they, they, they being orphan is, is finished. So this unusual use of preposition Allah suggests and that th there is this ta'akulu means ta'akulu by adding or it implies an omitted part, meaning do not eat up the property by adding it to your own property. The same thing, of course. So this, by adding it, is uh, is omitted from the verse. And another possible meaning is that Ella, because Ella has the uh, uh, the sense of a procedure. So it means that do not eat up their property before your own. You say, okay, this, this yatim is under my, my care. I spend on him or her from their own property. And then instead of uh, using your property for your own and therefore the, them, which is of course a mean thing to do, you say, okay, we all are eating together. We are living under one roof. So we spend what belongs to this orphan first. And then after that, uh, I will pay for, for them. Do not start with their property before you get to using your own. Uh, now, these are very strict rulings actually about orphans. And it is reported that uh, when these verses were revealed, these verses at the beginning of Surah uh, and Nisra about orphans, you know, you, the Surah began with the, the, the idea of that we are all of one uh, father and one mother, we are all related to each other, and you have to organize your relationship in society. And then it began with the matter of orphans, which are the most vulnerable, or were the most vulnerable in society at that time. Uh, so when this 
these verses were revealed, people said, okay, we don't bring any orphan to our houses. I mean, how do we know? Maybe we make a mistake. Maybe we eat a bit of their property, and these are in Hukan, Ahub, and Kabir, a great sin, if you do that. So, he, say, he says that, When this verse was revealed, people were a bit reluctant to take care of orphans in their houses. And of course, the orphan could not be left to themselves to live in a separate house, or to be given their own property to, to, to use it themselves for, for their natural needs. Of course, a generous person, generous person, a God-fearing person, would have taken orphans, would have kept their property for them, and would have spent from their own property on them. But of course, people were poor. They couldn't do that. They couldn't add one more mouth to their household. And that's why it was allowed for them to use what the orphans had for them. However, keeping count, separating these things was a bit difficult. So they came and complained to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that we don't know what to do. I mean, it's very difficult. Whereas Aluna Kahana in verse 222 of Surah Baqarah, whereas Aluna Kahana Liyatama, they are asking you regarding the orphans. Is it not better to not take any orphan under our guardianship? Because these verses are very frightening, actually. So, he said, They ask you with regards to orphans, say, of course, looking after them, looking after their affair, to make uh, their life to, to go towards a better state is, of course, better. And if you mingle with them, in, if you mix with them, they are their, uh, their religious brethren. So, although these verses are very strict, but it doesn't mean that you have to just put aside the care for the orphans. Uh, sometimes people are not... Uh, are not uh, careful about these matters, and then they don't mind. But Allah says, you have to look after them. You have to take care of them. You have to take them to your homes, and you have to be careful about these things as well. So it puts uh, an additional burden on those who are God-fearing and want to and want to uh, to strictly follow the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these verses are to actually uh, to tell the society that beware of zul, of taking the right of others, especially those who cannot protect themselves, especially those who cannot uh, put a case against you. Be careful about them. And then the ending sentence, If you do that, it's a great sin. Who is S? Of course, literally, who is to cry at a, at a camel or, 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 or cattle to, to stop them, to control them. It is aslu azajru lil abel. Of course, uh, mainly used for camels. Zajrul means shouting at the at the camel to stop or something like that. Now, why sin is called hub la'annahu yuzjaru anna? Because Allah is shouting at you. If you commit a sin, Allah is shouting at you. At you. The religion is shouting at you. The book of God is shouting at you. So he said, and it's, this term is only used here. And it's because of the graveness and enormity of the matter of the orphans. So, who is 
a sin that has been prohibited and warned against. And then, إِنَّهُ كَانَ هُوَنْ كَبِيرًا Kabir, here, of course, great sin, it means that sins have different grades of, uh, of uh, danger and different grades of punishment. Certainly, of course, we have grave sins, we have small sins, and even among grave sins, there are some sins which are even more grave, and about small sins, there are some which are smaller sins. So, is a very grave warning here about the orphans. Now, then the next verse takes up the matter of orphan girls. Number three, Allah تقصتوا في اليتامى فانكروا ما طاب لكم من النساء مثنى وثلاثة وربع فإن خفتم فإن خفتم فإن خفتم ألا تعدلوا فواحدة أو ما ملكت أيمانكم ذلك أدنى الله تعول If you fear that you may not deal justly with the orphans then marry other women. And certainly here, La Tuxetu Feliatama means orphan girls, which of course their guardians wish to marry them for different reasons. Now, if you fear that one may not deal justly, that you may not deal justly with the orphans, then marry other women than you like that you like. Two, three, or four. But if you fear that you may not treat them fairly, then marry only one. Or marry from among your slave women. That makes it likelier that you will not be unfair. Now, here, Majmul Bayan mentions a, a particular case that this was was revealed related to that particular verse and of course giving a general rule. This was, this is very common, we find it in the Quran, something happened and regarding that matter, Allah reveals a general rule which of course includes that matter as well. He says it was revealed about an orphan girl who was in the, the, under the guardianship of the Wali. And the Wali thought that she was a very beautiful girl and very rich. Lots of money was left for her by the, the father. So he thought that it's good that I marry her and I don't need to give her any mahr, any sadaq. And also, I can certainly have the, the property. I mean, I can spend her money as something between us. So they were warned that they should not marry orphan girls in this way. Unless they are able to, of course, be fair and just as they marry other women who have guardians themselves and who can support themselves, protect themselves. And if they fear that they are not able to do justice with regards to orphan girls, then go and marry other women. This is the context of the verse. And uh, which is about financially, uh, orphan girls which, which, which were financially oppressed by those who, whom under their care where they were living. Uh, in Al-Mizan, he says, Allah Taba Tabai Rahmatullah says that since tribal wars and raids were very common among Arabs at the time, there were many orphans, orphan girls especially among them. Then due to the lack of proper and fair inheritance laws and legal authority who could enforce any existing law as well. So it was common that men would marry orphan girls, usurp their inherited wealth, 
and then divorce them. Now, this is, of course, the, the, the verse is not saying anything about, uh, about divorce, but says that you should be careful. I mean, if you think that there's an iota of possibility that you cannot give the right of the orphan girls, do not marry them. Marry other women. Marry what is lawful for you. This is one meaning of what is lawful for you. This orphan girl is not lawful for you to marry. So when this happened, of course, this left these young women without any financial backing. And uh, of course, if they were divorced, people were no more willing to marry them. So this is the uh, the context of the verse, inshallah, we will discuss the details, details of the verse in our next session. Rabbana la tuzaq qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antal wahhab wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi